Well, hello there, motherfuckers. And I want to talk a little bit about Spider-Man Homecoming. Now, before we start, I don't want to hear any crybabies about, you know, me talking bad about a Marvel movie before it's been released or read the comics, you know, all these garbage arguments. I'm tired of hearing it, you know. Read the comics. People like to pretend that I don't have this, that Spider-Man's my favorite superhero. You know, I talk about how much I love Marvel. People constantly say that I hate it. I talk about nostalgic things about Marvel. I talk about movies that I've liked that, you know, feature Marvel characters. But somehow I've become the in the enemy of the internet. And the Marvel fanboys, see, that's because that's who's saying this. There's a lot of sensible Marvel fans out there, such as myself, that just because they love Marvel doesn't mean they go into a movie with blinders on. And no matter what, no matter how shitty it is, I'm not going to just accept the movie and enjoy it. <laughs> you know, that's what people want to hear. People, you know, it was so obvious that Civil War was not a movie that most people would enjoy. It took no effort. You're watching a boring-ass movie. You know, you have to pretend to enjoy it so you can fit in with all the other goofballs on the Internet. Otherwise, they're going to give you a hard time about not reading the comics. This is like a standing excuse. Oh, my, the movie sucks, but... uh. You know, let me tell you why you're ignorant and why you don't like it. No, it's not just that the movie's bad and that it has bad character development, a bad plot, and a nonsensical story that's boring as fuck. No, that's not it. It's because you don't know enough about the comics. Well, I'm here to say fuck the comics. Like, pretend like I didn't grow up reading comics, for God fucking sakes. So we're going to talk a little bit about Spider-Man Homecoming, as I said, you know, do yourself a favor if you don't like negativity, <laughs> you know, go ahead, take a hike, hit dislike, unsubscribe, get the fuck out. That's all I can say if, you know, unless you want to sit here and listen to some legitimate criticism that actually makes sense and ain't pandering to the fanboys just so they could get some cheap views and likes and popularity here on YouTube. See, I'm not, you know, I'm not here on YouTube to be popular, you know, that's like being the fucking popular guy in the breakfast club, for example, not going to be the jock, you know, who just gets the popularity, um, you know, by acting like a fucking doofus. That's not what uh, I'm here on YouTube to do. I'm here to state my opinion and whether or not I get you know, a group of people to agree with me or an army of people to disagree with me. You know, let the cards fall where they may. That's what happens when you tell the truth. So, what am I a fan of? Well, let's talk a little bit about this. Um, this video is mostly about a major announcement. But I'm going to talk a little bit about, you know, going into uh, Spider-Man Homecoming. What about this hype? Let's talk about what I thought about Spider-Man and Civil War. I already talked about it. The CGI looked like shit. Spider-Man looked like shit. Um, you know, Holland is okay. He's an okay actor. That's not really my age preference and my look for Peter Parker. I mean, he looks all right. I'm not going to lie. I ain't entirely happy with it. And he's a little bit, you know, too young. I like my Spider-Man to be more like he was in the comics and the cartoons. You know, like senior year in high school. That's when I think he was bit by the spider anyway, but I could be wrong. Whatever it is, I, I'd rather they pick an older actor like James Garfield, uh, excuse me, Andrew Garfield, uh, or Tobey Maguire, for example. Um, so, you got those two guys... And, you know, they, they both did a good job uh, in their own respect. I prefer Tobey Maguire. Uh, you know, Andrew Garfield didn't captivate me. I liked more of his sarcasm, which was more akin to the comics and the cartoon. I also want to state about this uh, personality of Spider-Man. 
in the comics and the cartoon, he was very sarcastic and funny. And another reason why he's my favorite. Um, now, they didn't do that so much in the Tobey Maguire films, or I should say more the Sam Raimi films. Because I love the Sam Raimi films. I made no bones about that here on YouTube, stating my love for the, uh, the Spider-Man trilogy. And I'll be the first one to say that Spider-Man 3 had some problems, but I'd also be lying if I said it was a boring movie. There was actually a lot to like about that film. It had a lot of problems, especially the portrayal of Venom. Um, but, you know, you could go on all day and make 30 videos on that alone. But I have a hard time saying that I didn't enjoy the movie. In fact, it made me come back multiple times. I've watched Spider-Man 3 a lot of times, and I have it on DVD, so I'd be fucking lying if I said that I didn't enjoy it, uh, so, you know, once again, telling the truth, it's not that bad, but Spider-Man 2 is my favorite Marvel movie of all time, and that's counting everything, even Disney, you know, so that's Age of Ultron, Civil War, Winter Soldier, Iron Man 1, 2, and 3, if you got a problem with that, kiss my fucking ass. That's my favorite movie, uh, favorite Marvel movie, um, and one of my favorite superhero movies. Uh, maybe the only thing that can contend with that might be, you know, the uh, Christopher Reeve uh, Superman, you know, but I'm probably going to go with Spider-Man 2. Um, just a very well-made movie. Uh, something about the Sam Raimi films that was lacking in the ones that starred Andrew Garfield is that it, it captured the emotion. It tugged at my heartstrings. It made me care and get engrossed. And that's why I love Spider-Man 2 so much. It's so engrossing. You know, the relationship between Peter Parker and uh, Mary Jane and, you know, the way how the villain Dr. Octopus is implemented. It's all fits together so perfectly. And you just got action You've got comedy, you got all, even though Spider-Man himself isn't, you know, uh, true to his comic book self, there's still a lot to like. That's what's so amazing about it. It's actually lacking in one department of Spider-Man's key personality traits, yet it somehow manages to be so good. Um, so, without a doubt, one of my favorites. Now, Andrew Garfield had... Um, you know, the sarcasm down, but the captivation was not there. Uh, I just could not get into it. And the thing is, that's actually probably an even more important part of, of the Spider-Man series. The emotional aspect. There's a lot of heartbreak. Um, there's a lot of death. There's a, a, a lot of trials and tribulations. I mean, uh, Peter Parker goes through so much when you really think about it in the comics and the cartoons. I mean, this guy's got a tough life. Maybe not as tough as Bruce Wayne, but then again, the guy ain't a fucking billionaire, so it's not like he can drown his sorrows with loads of fucking money in a big-ass mansion, fancy cars. You know, the guy's just a mild-mannered scientist, really, and uh, you know, not even a full-fledged one at that, and he's a photographer, you know, that's all he is mainly, um, anyway, so, I think that Sam Raimi definitely captured the character better, um, and the series as a whole, that's not to not, you know, Andrew Garfield's performance, he did a good job with that, but overall, the movies just did not stick with me, and I've never went back and watched either Amazing Spider-Man film. Now, now that I've got that out of the way and I explain how I feel about the Spider-Man films, let's talk about this Spider-Man Homecoming. Oh boy, here we go. You know, Disney's got their fucking, you know, claws all over this little bastard of a movie. And as I said, Disney will eventually kill this fucking franchise until there's nothing left. Going to suck it dry and make it into nothing more than a fucking commercial. And the fanboys eat it up. So, that's not to say that this movie's not going to be bad. Disney, Disney's version of Marvel has produced several decent films, such as Thor... And uh, 
Iron Man, and of course, Winter Soldier, which was a great movie. Now, right off the bat, the story comes up about two weeks ago, so I'm a little bit late on this. Well, we, well, we actually knew that this actress slash singer was going to be in the movie by the name of uh, Zendaya. And Zendaya is from the Disney Channel. She's on some show. She's a singer. I think she's also a dancer, probably. Uh, and she's an actress. She's a triple threat. But who the fuck is she? I don't watch the Disney Channel. So maybe that's my ignorance. But, you know, she's going to be playing Mary Jane of all people. Now, before I jump into Zendaya, let's talk a little bit about the uh, Mary Jane that was in my favorite, uh, you know, era of Spider-Man. The uh, Sam Raimi film. So Kirsten Dunst. You know, I don't know if she's a natural redhead or not, but I accepted her as Mary Jane. There's arguments to this day that she's not a good actress and that she wasn't pretty enough to play Mary Jane. I think she's decently attractive. Not my type, but she's okay. And I don't really think her performance was that bad. I mean, I think, you know, uh, she played off of Toby quite well. And at the time, I still remember, you know, kids a little bit older than me. I saw the movie like two, three times when it, when the first one came out in 2002. Um, and so when the movie came out, I don't remember people remarking on how hot they thought Kirsten Dunst was at the time. So, you know, she was seen as, as a sex symbol in 2002. So why not throw her out there? Why not put her in the movie? So I didn't have a problem with her. You know, I liked her. I was okay with the pick. Personal preference, I guess, but I saw Kirsten Dunst as Mary Jane because, well, maybe because the movie was the first of its kind. They had some, you know, Spider Man movies that were like B movies, so they don't really count. So that's who I uh, knew was Mary Jane. That's who I knew. And so I was perfectly fine with Kirsten Dunst. Didn't have a problem. But, you know, as years go on, people find shit to complain about. Um, you know, and don't let nostalgia cloud your judgment. If you think that a movie's not as good as it was the first time you saw it, say it. You know, all right. So I respect that you don't like Kirsten Dunst. You're entitled to your opinion. Now, I said that. Entitled to my opinion. It's exactly what I'm entitled to here in this fucking video. So let's talk a little bit about this pick of Zendaya. Now, go ahead. Google search Zendaya. I'll wait. You probably don't know who the fuck that is even, but you're ready to defend her. Because you're a Marvel fanboy. You gotta do what's right for the powerhouse Disney. Go ahead. I'll wait. Got it? Okay. So, there you go. So, Zendaya was originally supposed to play a, a girl called uh, Michelle. It was just Michelle. No last name, nothing. It was sounded like she was an extra or a miscellaneous character that would have no effect on the story. Maybe a light love interest for, you know, Peter, but that's about it. No damage done. See you later, honey. Well, turns out that her role is a little bit more than just Michelle. It's going to be the iconic Mary Jane. You know, the girl that ends up being Peter Parker's wife. Kind of a major character. Um, you know, he ends up playing the damsel in distress and pretty much uh, many times Peter's life coach. You know, very important character. When it comes to Spider-Man, for God's sakes, you know, Spider-Man 2 and 3 was all about the romance. Uh, you know, a lot of 1 as well, was the whole trilogy was about the romance of Peter Parker and Mary Jane. Now, there's a problem here. Take a look at Zendaya. Take a look at, you know, near half decade of what Mary Jane's supposed to look like in the comics. And do I really need to say it? Zendaya is black. Well, people will make the argument she's mixed. She's, you know, got wigs. 
some people were just retarded about it and you know let's not pay attention to them she doesn't have red hair you know completely ignoring the fact that they could dye someone's hair but that's not the point here why, why are we doing this is really what I want to know why after you know decades um, of having you know Mary Jane be a white redhead why the fuck are we going and casting a black girl Let's not pretend like this isn't being done for racial reasons and to make a statement. Now, here's the thing. This is just a fucking movie. It's basically, people don't want to admit it, but it's a fucking kid's movie. Disney's looking to sell toys and video games. They don't give a fuck about the older fans. I mean, they're going to come to see it. They'll throw in some added adult humor, but Disney is a cash cow. They're looking to make a quick buck. And if they need to sacrifice quality to, in order to achieve quantity, they're going to do it just to achieve the dollar. So, there, you know, you, you already know that from Disney. They stopped caring a long time ago about making the maximum quality and making great films. Um, you know, and, and they're all about making money. Just look at the fucking Disney Channel. Take a look at Disney. Disney was known for great acting. The voice actors, for example, you know, that they used to do great performances. You turn your attention now to the Disney Channel and you see a load of fucking garbage. You see Hannah Montana and all these hosts of, you know, the Wizards of Waverly Place and whatever the fuck they got shown on there right now. The show with Zandaya. And you see shows that almost look like they're being purposely, you know, done to look bad, cheesy, and corny and dumb. I have, you know, I don't know what happened to Disney. I remember the days when Disney used to be a premium channel. It was up there with HBO. You had to pay separately. You had to subscribe to the channel. That's how good it was. You needed to be an exclusive member. Now they fill it up with bullshit. So it's not beneath them to just try to make a quick buck. So let's take the blinders off Marvel fans. Let's stop ordering everybody. Such bullies here, you know, when it comes to, uh, you know, Marvel fandom. You know, oh, read the comics. You know, like, uh, I don't understand. You know, what are you standing next to a tub of comics, like with a fucking nightstick or something? You're like a security guard making sure everybody reads every single fucking comic. You know, just because it happened in the comic doesn't mean that it doesn't suck and it's not boring. I mean, if I'm watching a movie and it's unappealing, just because it happened in the comic, that makes it good, then that means the comics suck. and That's why I haven't read comics in years, because I don't like the story arcs. I think that they're poorly done. I think they're shitty. And I think they're unimaginative and they just try to go for the bizarre or just whatever, just to fill up a fucking page, basically. Not a big fan of Marvel's current uh, direction. Definitely not a big fan of Disney's current direction either. So, Zandaya. They're picking a black girl to be Mary Jane. And it's like, doesn't Disney see the problem here? Right now, without getting too political or into too many different social taboos and start bringing stuff up, there's a lot of racial tension in this country, to be perfectly honest. Do you really think it's a good idea to start changing the race of an iconic comic book character? They already did that with the Human Torch to a lot of backlash in that shitty-ass Fantastic Four reboot. So why the fuck would they do it again with uh, with this right here, with Zandaya and Spider-Man Homecoming? I mean, it's just a bad idea. Why would you, you know, take the race and just change it? It's like, do they need to make Zandaya Mary Jane? They can't find anybody else. They have to use her. And it's like, it's just tradition. And I'm already, you know, friends that I know in real life and Facebook giving me a hard time trying to tell me about how they've had, you know, different versions of Captain America 
and, and stuff with different races. And I already know Spider-Man's been, they changed his race and everything. But give me a fucking break already. You know, uh, whatever. we're just changing races so we can, uh, you know, show diversity. And Disney's under pressure, I guess, to be more diverse. So we're just having a racial change just to have one. Just so they can say they've done it. So they can appease, you know, people in Hollywood. And that's all it's about. I mean, how pathetic is it? That a, that a director, a producer, or just filmmakers in general, they have to compromise their filmmaking integrity just to please a couple of fucking goofballs that want to do everything politically correct so they can appease groups and corporations. I, I, I mean, is this, you know, this is how things are going to go in Hollywood? This is how Disney is going to do business? You know, I, I mean, it might sound like, you know, you're getting ahead of yourself, Brad. You don't even know how she's going to be as Mary Jane. But the thing is, you're the, you're the goofballs out there that always say, the comics, the comics. Well, okay, so why aren't you complaining more about this? And a fair amount that you are, but here you go. Here's your comics right there. You got a black Mary Jane. That's not in the comics, is it? Maybe it is. If so, then... Uh, I guess I failed that argument, but whatever it is, it's like traditionally it's not. So they're trying to switch things up. But is it like they know that the the minute anybody says anything about the fact that they they chose a black actor as Mary Jane starts, you know, criticizing it, they're going to go racist right away cuz that's what they jump to. You know, even though it's a movie and it's a role of a beloved character or the, you know, wife of a very beloved character. You know, they're going to, you know, people are going to get upset when that character isn't exactly, you know, what they remember him to be or, or, or uh, her to be. You know, they, uh, no one remembers Mary Jane being black because she wasn't. So you can't just change a character and just accept you know, people to just, oh, accept it and just say, oh, this is okay. And, you know, let's not pretend like this isn't already happening. I, I, I click on the announcement on Facebook when they put it out about Zandaya. And, uh, you know, I'm scrolling through the comments. And right away, no, to no surprise, people like the only reason people would have a problem with this is because of her race. Well, congratulations for doing the cookie cutter argument. You know, confetti's going to fall from the sky. Wish I had one of those things that go, woo, you know, so a little kazoo thing with the tube on it. So, you know, that folds out and whatever the thing is called, the kazoo thing that you use on New Year's, whatever it is. That, you know, it's like clockwork, just like that, just like that. You know, you got something coming out. It's obviously meant, how can they announce this and not expect there to be backlash? Don't you think it just would have been better off to not do this at all? Oh, well, Brad, if they don't do it, when they when are they going to? Why do we have to do it? Why do they have to pick her? Why do they have to mess with the race of the character? I, I mean, is this going to give people satisfaction at the end of the day? You know, oh, we changed Mary Jane's race. Well, wow. You know, so it's not accurate. You know, this is not how I remember the character from my childhood looking. So, you know, it, it, it's like when they tried to get too crazy with it with the honeymooners. The most famous example of trying to change characters' races. They made Ralph, Ralph Cramden and Ed Norton black. You know, and 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 they they did and they expect it to be a successful movie, and it turned out to be an atomic fucking bomb. I I mean, why do they think? Why do filmmakers still think? I mean, maybe they don't have a choice in the matter. Why does Disney think that? They could just do this and people are going to be okay with it. It's going to start fights. It's already starting fights on Facebook. Why would they do this at the peak of racial tension in this country? You think maybe that they could at least 
you know, uh, let this one slide and just make Mary Jane White so everyone can just be fucking. Well, not everyone's going to be happy, but at least it would be expected. But then they got to throw the curveball out. And that's what they were, that's what they wanted. They wanted the shock reaction. That's what they were going for to create interest and in what's. Otherwise, this movie kind of got a lukewarm response. People are not really excited about it. Um, you know, you don't really see a whole lot of people talking about Spider-Man Homecoming. It's not a big hashtag. It ain't trending. We could pretend that maybe it is, but I don't think that it is. And most people don't even know who the fuck Zendaya is. That's what I'm saying. Why are they racing to, to, to put her in the role of Mary Jane? Why her of all people? You don't have all these other aspiring actresses who, you know, want to make it big. We got to pick her of all people. Who is she? I'm looking like, you know, all right, so this is Mary Jane. Uh, it's like, you know, at least Kirsten Dunst was in some shit before this that was mildly popular. This, they're picking some Disney goof that only 12-year-olds are going to know. And that's probably the intended purpose of this. But really the intended purpose is to cause a stir and to, you know, appease certain groups. And we all know which groups those are. So here you go, motherfuckers. None too pleased at this decision. It's causing fights. It's causing unrest. And it's just pissing me off. I don't like it. Just make her fucking white. They should have kept her as Michelle. And just, you know, come on. They have to do this interracial shit. Fuck off. I mean, I've dated black girls for fuck's sake. We don't need this shit shoved down our fucking throat. You know, oh, like, wh what is this supposed to accomplish? Okay, you know, uh, we understand they're trying to get a message. They've got a little bit of an agenda going there. But uh, why does it have to be in a fun movie like Spider-Man? They have to fucking ruin it with this dumbass fucking bullshit. All right, motherfuckers.